What's going on, folks? Painless. Uh, nice cup of Joe. Got it in this morning. Decided to do another video before I head to the virtual plantation. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I see things. Uh, I kind of spoke on it last video. Um, well, at least, at least kind of lean towards her, uh, about, you know, the manosphere is starting to kick up and it's reason it's starting to kick up is because you have heavy hitters in this content creator world coming for it. Uh, and you know, there's not so much, you know, as far as me and the manosphere, People that ask a painless is I, I would say this. I am a supporter of the knowledge um, because these are things that I've said. I've even heard people say these things, and it's and again, it's it's the things that I've just formulated through trial and error, talking to um, my dad and, and older men. Uh, th this stuff isn't new. The guys that are saying this, that they're. they're they're just ones that have um, packaged it, as I've said in uh, videos before. Many of us were going through things, and we were wondering. We couldn't put it into words until we got amongst one another and started hearing stories and, and, and instances in which they were all common. There was a common denominator. And then, and see, a lot of these guys can articulate better. Um, and that's fine. That's good. Everyone plays their role. Uh, it's about the mission. Um, so that's that's where these guys come in at. Your Dennis Sperlings. I've started uh, checking out that brother's that brother's uh, content. It's legit. Um, others, you know. Um, but he's one that I've. Um, he said some things that I've said before. But again, <clears throat> it's common knowledge. It's not about who, who says the most um, flyest stuff. That's those whole tips. And I've said that about them. All these intellectual, pseudo-intellectual jousters. Oh, I know more. I, I know what happened in 3000 BC. I know what happened more during that time than you. But then again, what is that doing for the people that they claim they want to release out of bondage? Okay. It just becomes a lot of, I know more than you shit, jousting and pissing contests and dick swinging. That's all that is at the end of the day. So I, and I, I don't want the manosphere, while I'm not part of it, I do support it to come to that because all these things have been around. It's, 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 it's just that certain brothers, um, regardless of ethnicity or background, can articulate more than others. You know, I'm not the best articulator, but I can get my message across. But I do recognize my role and do submit to men that can articulate better than me. Okay, and that's what it's about. I've talked about submission to other men. It's not about, it's about taking orders. You know, a lot of men need to understand the concept, the concept of a pecking order, rank, structure, status. Know your fucking role. Play your position. Fine tune your position. Be the best at your position. And be useful to the group. Think of something bigger than your goddamn self, in other words. And all men should have this. All men should understand and respect this concept. So how shit gets done with men. When you step outside of those confines of restrictions, you get DP'd. You get disciplined. That's it. That's how men roll. This is how men were able to get shit done. But you know what? <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to get into the focal point of this video. Serena Williams. Serena Williams. <laughs> Come here, Williams. 
Oh. Uh, uh, I've said that, you know, and <laughs> many of y'all know I've been saying this too. Black women can't do what us black men do. I've said this. I've said this to Agnosium. I said Jorge, Chad, Kim Juan, they're not going to put up with the things that you do to that you do in the so-called black community and are unchecked and not accounted for. You can't do that over there. You can't be popping off over there in Koreatown. You can't be popping off like you do on the South Side or East St. Louis. Like You can't do that in Little Armenia because you will get checked. Now, I believe that there is a uh, somewhat of a jealousy that you have all these, you know, you have your he you have your heavy hitters over there that uh, you know black men have no resources. Black men are going to be a hashtag. That's a, I've literally heard these women say that black men now are only walking hashtags, and this is why I tell brothers. You need to reclaim your image because you not only, you have black women out here calling you walking hashtag. Now a hashtag reverts, uh, is in reference to your Trayvon Martins, your Michael Browns, your Eric Gardner's, your Freddie Gray's, as of late, your George Floyd's. Meaning that at any moment's notice, <laughs> That any time you are up for grabs by white overseers, only to be gunned down in the streets because you lack resources, because you can't protect your communities, your so-called communities. That's essentially what these, I've, lit, I've heard these black women say that black men are walking hashtags. This is where we're at, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and when I heard it, I thought it was kind of hilarious. But, you know, with Serena Williams, see, the thing, this is what happens. <sighs> the pressure is on. Now, I watched a clip where Serena Williams, uh, <laughs> where she, uh, I, I believe Sway was on the interview panel, um, and two other females, uh, DJ Sway out of Oakland Bay Area, legendary uh, uh, figure in the hip hop community. Um, and <laughs> she went on to say about the racism in tennis. And, uh, you know, she noticed that when, um, you know, Venus would score, the crowd would kind of like, oh, damn, she scored. And then when she would, you know, wouldn't score, the crowd would be like, yeah, 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 you know, and she recognized the racism, and, and, and I, you know what, and I've seen this, I've seen this in sports, I've seen this in entertainment, so I'm not taking away from nothing she says, I've seen purposeful uh, actions by other groups, not only Caucasian groups, but not what we would call minorities, okay, uh, towards blacks, towards black folk. Yes, I am not, I am not discrediting anything Serena Williams said. I think she is 100% accurate, <laughs> but here's the kicker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I... You, you see the thumbnail, <laughs> and many of y'all know what time it is when you see that thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> and I, and I and with that, <laughs> also seeing those things that I just mentioned, I've also seen this as well. I 
I found, see, it's always this question. It's always been this question. If a black man or a black woman is married to a Caucasian woman, a white woman, can he speak on the things that, or the ills that's going on in the so-called black community? This is the age-old question and hotepism in the gender war. And I, I, I don't know. Loyalty lies. What is your loyalty lie? My thing, <laughs> I found that the biggest clout chasers, the biggest, some of the biggest racial clout chasers, some of the biggest proponents of I'm black or this is messed up, blase, blase, or black people, men and women, mostly men, a lot of you brothers, that are married to white Caucasian women. Some of the biggest cheerleaders I've seen within the last year with all this stuff going on, George Floyd, uh, this other stuff, this other societal stuff that has gotten Americans triggered, that has gotten the world triggered, rather, um, and emotional, you know, I, and I say to myself, <laughs> and, in a, and in a way, I, you know, in, in some sick and twisted way, when I hear the synthetic G's and the Tanya uh, TKO's, uh, or the Tanya Nowhere to Go's, <laughs> I, they, you know, I'm not, they give you a lot to chew on in some respect. And in actuality, I've been saying those things as well, but I don't, don't those things are easy to formulate. I'm not saying, I, oh, uh, oh, they're cut. I'm not going to do, put it this way, I'm not going to do one of these numbers. Y'all arguing about who got what from what. Oh, y'all got that shit from me. That's not painless style. Because I know that anyone with a rational thinking mind, which is few and far between, a.k.a. rare, can come to these conclusions on their own if looking at things with an honest, studious eye, this observation, you can come up with these same concepts on your own. But yeah, like I said, some of the biggest cheerleaders for justice have been these brothers out here that swirl. That lay as Cynthia G between the legs of their oppressors, in their eyes, oppressors. I've had, I've seen posts by brothers with white wives, and I love these guys to death. But I wonder to myself, you used to talk about oppression, and this country is this, and this country is founded on oppression, and. But you're laying with the daughters of the very men that have done in your eye. See, the thing with painless is, see, that's why I don't, I, I, I've dated all types of women in my life. See, <laughs> I could go where I want to go. I can chill with who I want to chill with because I don't have these thoughts. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> I'm not pulling a Julia Roberts. I'm not sleeping with the enemy. I think that's Julia Roberts anyway. I'm not sleeping. See, you, how do you have these, these, these beliefs and you're still sleeping with the very woman that are... And you not only you sleeping with you're procreating with them as well. I don't. I, 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 
just chill over there in your gated community with your Caucasian woman and and just be quiet. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, what are you trying to justify? But that's what it is. Uh, what I've discovered is, you know, and it's not right or wrong, good or bad. Many people that get into these interracial relationships, they have to validate their blackness at any avail. So they'll say outlandish things like this country was founded on oppression. Okay. Who is the common who is the common perp in 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 terms of oppression? When you think of oppression or someone being oppressed, or this the term oppression in the United States of America, who the hell comes to mind? The white man. Okay, since we've cleared that up, who creates white men? White women. Who the facilitator, the incubator? White women. And yet you brothers on this see, you gotta pick what the fuck you gonna do. Either you gonna be you just gonna deal white women and stuff, which is fine. No problems. But you know, I'm hard pressed to believe you when you come talking this pro black stuff and you got um little house on the prairie on your fucking right arm. You know, I mean <clears throat> what? What what what's this over validation? And this is where Serena Williams fell into. You think she doesn't feel the heat over there with that white guy and all his white family? It reminds me of Dr. <laughs> it reminds me of, this is like 10 years ago. Maybe 10, 12 years ago. <laughs> oh, the Dr. Laura show. I remember this black, and some of y'all remember this crazy ass shit. This black female called in, and she was married to a white guy. And she was complaining that, you know, her family were calling her the N-word. His family, rather, was calling her the N-word. And I guess he wasn't doing nothing. And she was very, you know, uh, you know just very uh, concerned and very dramatic about the situation. Rightly so, as she should be. But basically, Dr. Laura said, well, hell, you married his ass. You knew what you were getting. <laughs> you, know what you, you know what you was getting into. So, I, you know, I'm really, not, I'm really not trying to hear what you're saying. Basically, that's what Dr. Laura was saying. Now, Dr. Laura was a shock jock. Uh, I mean, she was like, shit, she was very, I don't even know what happened to her. But when I heard that, I was, uh, that's around the time. I was getting into YouTube. Uh, but yeah, that's what she said. Basically, you know, suck it up, buttercup. Uh, you knew this shit. Uh, and then, <laughs> that's how I look at it with Serena Williams. Like, suck it up. This, these, this, this is what comes with this when you try to swirl, okay? See, a brother that goes, see, a brother that deals with any type of woman, he's not going to deal, brothers do not deal with that. We're not going to go to Thanksgiving and be called the N-word or Mayate. Now, those Mexicans or those Caucasians or those Italians, uh, Mulians, they'll say that shit when we're gone, but they won't say that shit when we're there. However, Maria, Julia, and Sylvia, they'll say that shit to your ass at the dinner table. Because you don't have, 
the security. You don't have the strength. You don't have, you're not a man. This is why I say you black women out here, they go and swirl. You don't have the credentials to take up for yourself when faced in a situation like that. There's, <laughs> there's tons of stories of sisters being disrespected not only by the men of the family, but the women of the family. And she ain't did shit. See, a brother would get it cracking over there, even if it's three or four of them. And most men know, look, we'll call this fool. I mean, yeah, we don't mess with myates. But you know what? This is my sister's husband or boyfriend. While he's here for a couple hours, I'll, I'll be subtle. I'll be cool, but it's back to my I tell you when they when they <laughs> when they leave. See, men, we can we can we can deal, and then switch up. See, women, you guys have no filter. It's on and cracking all the time with y'all. And I said this, <laughs> that shit that happened with Meghan Markle, you know, and and Prince Harry, you should have seen. All the disrespectful comments towards her. And guess where they came from? White women. Of all. And you know how you can look at someone's Facebook page and kind of see. And these were white women from all facets of society. Probably from the West Virginia uh, trailer parks up to Beverly Hills and Tribeca and all that shit. See, white women are going to let y'all have it. But y'all stay trying to look like them. This was nothing but... And <laughs> I found the video I was talking about with her and Sway and two other females. I was looking at her Zoom video. And, you know, because I say this because people are saying, did she really bleach her skin? But I was looking at that Zoom video if she had all, and this was like three or four months ago, she looked like she got touched up. <laughs> she looked like she got touched up with some of that, that cream. So, I, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, you take big risks when you swirl, black women. You already have been considered the least desired to date. Okay, that's one. Because Hispanic women swirl. I would think that they men would say, yeah, she's a swirler. She likes huevos, gringo, whatever. So some of those men would be like, yeah, these women on our side, yeah, they're swirlers. But see, Hispanic women are not the least desired. In fact, many men go out looking for Latino slash Hispanic women. Not many are checking for black women. And, you know, I'm going to touch on what Brother Dennis Sperlin said, and uh, which stuck to me. Um, <laughs> a lot, there, there's, there's chaos in millions of black homes now in which you have black women who have sons that are 19, 20, 22, not wanting to deal with women that look like them. And these black women, you know, it, it's two things. See, black men, we, see, let, let me backtrack. The mothers are, are having breakdowns wondering why their sons don't like women that look like them. But see, this is just an obfuscation because they damn well know uh, this is just deniability. I talked about plausible deniability. This, and, you know, just, just this neglect, um, just negligence in terms of you know why the hell your son don't want to bring home a woman that looks like you. You know this. So start with the charade. See, men, we know. We just don't speak. But now the, the message is starting to come out now. 
And these guys in the manosphere, this is like I said in the beginning portions of this video, this is why a lot of them are being attacked because they are highlighting a lot of this shit. And I'm just sitting back eating my popcorn. These are the realities. So, you know, excuse me. So you have Serena Williams looking like Lion King. Because of the pressures. See, brothers ain't going to put on no... We're not, we're not going to look like... <laughs> what's that character that Dave Chappelle used to play? Lester Holt? <laughs> With the bleached skin and the uh, toupee. See, brothers ain't going to do that. We don't have to do that. Because we're men. And we can, we, can, we can maneuver. We can date out. And there's a movement by these uh, naysayers, your synthetic Gs. And see, that I said that they're trying to shame us. They're trying to make it seem like we're the least desired. See, <laughs> y'all, black, black women are the least desired. Now, not to painless. I find very, I mean, I mess with black women. I mean, yeah. But I, I sift through if anyone, Caucasian, Asian, Hispanic. But what I'm saying is that to the world, you're the least desired. Maybe that's a better way to say it. To the world, you're the least desired. Versus a black man, we're not the least desired out of men. I would say we're the most hated. But then women will mess with us. And that's not a prize or, or a gloat. I'm just saying. And I've been saying that since 2012. Y'all can't do what we do because the men are not going to tolerate that shit. You get on board because the roles are already the masculine. See, you automatically come into a subservient role. So you need to get with his program. Not him get with yours. So I, <laughs> Serena Williams, she, uh, she's doing what is expected when you swirl. She's doing what is, what, this is who you are. You sit around <laughs> With the same women that look down on you, you try to emulate. Peace.